Lenovo is obviously best known for its computers, from its ThinkPads to its desktops. That's very much its forte. But the company does make smartphones too, and they're showing off a few here at Mobile World Congress. One of them is the Lenovo Z5 Pro GT, which is a Snapdragon 855 device with a pop-out camera. I'm not gonna dwell on that too much though because I think this is actually a little more interesting. This is the Lenovo Tab V7. It's a pretty definitively mid-range phone and kind of a big one at that, meant for developing markets and specifically people in those markets with really long commutes. Let's take a closer look. Right off the bat, I think it's probably clear to say that this will stretch your hand to its limits. It's stretching mine, and I have fairly big hands. My videographer, Brian, just simply cannot use this device, and that's a real concern for a lot of people. That said, this is really meant for people who are stationary for a long time. If you commute to work on a train or on a bus and you would rather have a big screen and one device rather than lugging around multiple, that's where the V7 kind of comes into play. It uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 chipset. That's an octa-core chipset with three or four gigabytes of RAM, and the limitations do become apparent pretty quickly. Just sort of swiping around through the Google feed, for instance, you see a bit of stuttering as you're scrolling through things like the Google feed, and that persists when you jump into Chrome and start reading things online. It's not maybe the biggest deal breaker out there, but it is something to be aware of, especially when this is kind of meant to be the one device that you take with you everywhere. So yeah, the hardware here isn't exactly top tier. It is, however, enough to play through a couple rounds of Brawl Stars and not really notice any lag or drop frames, which is, again, really solid if you're planning on sitting in one place for quite a long time. And I've gotta tell you, as big and as unwieldy as the screen is sometimes, it does actually look really nice. It runs at 2160 by 1080. It is an IPS LCD display, and it comes with all of the shortcomings that LCDs have. The blacks aren't particularly deep, and the colors could be a little punchier, but considering the 250 euro price tag, I'm willing to overlook quite a lot. You do also have a pair of speakers, one that faces front and one that actually shoots out of the bottom for more immersive sound. And while you should almost certainly, for the sake of your fellow passengers, use the headphone jack on the top of the phone, the sound quality out of the speakers actually isn't too bad. So if you plan to lounge on the couch for a bit, you could do a lot worse. As you might expect though, the camera situation is a little less than amazing. We're working with a 13 megapixel sensor around back and a five megapixel front facing camera. And in general, the photos, including the one I just took here, are fine. Generally, when you see a mid-range device like this, companies are usually eager to cut costs and the camera is one of the places where they really, really tend to lowball things. That said, I'm getting decent quality out of this thing. Granted, we have very bright light. I can't imagine this thing would do very well at a bar, but again, quite nice detail. The colors are maybe not the most accurate. They're a little washed out actually, but in general, for a phone that costs this much, and by the way, for one that's really focused on the display, I'm willing to live with that. Really, the best thing you could say about this phone is that it has a huge battery, by far one of the biggest we've seen in a smartphone so far. It's got a 5,180 milliamp hour battery inside, which should be more than enough to keep this phone running for over a day on a single charge, but we'll kind of have to see how that works in the real world. So yes, ultimately this is maybe not the most fascinating device we've seen here at Mobile World Congress 2019, but it's a very practical one, and that matters to a lot of people. This is a device that, for all of its shortcomings, is meant to go the distance and last for people who really need a very specific kind of device, who really need this big screen and don't want to carry around a bunch of other gadgets. For 250 euro, I think this is a pretty strong option, but the show has barely just begun, so stay tuned for more as we find it. Thank you.